Hey, everybody. My name is Dr. Andrew Rube. I have the privilege and the pleasure of being a pediatric and family chiropractor here at Thrive Chiropractic. And I'm so excited that you are joining me on this Kick the Sick webinar. I'm excited because the fact that you are here tells me that you care about what we care about, which is kids and families thriving, kids being at their best, kids being healthy. That is what we are meant to do. And the sad thing is, it's not really taking place. If we look around the world, we look around sometimes within our own families, we don't see health. So let's start tonight. Let's start whenever you're listening to this by just figuring out what does it mean to be healthy? And I'll pretend that you can hear me and I can hear you and we're talking back and forth. And then you just raise your hand and said, hey, I have an answer to what healthy means. And I'm assuming that that answer is some variation of not sick, right? At the very minimum, healthy means not sick. Sadly, though, that's where the answer stops for most people. It just stops at that. It's like, hey, if I'm not sick, that means health. But I really don't think that's the full story. Let me tell you a little story to sort of depict that. Imagine for me uh, about eight and a half years ago, back on my wedding day, you can think of yours if you would prefer that. Imagine that you're back on that day. And man, there's a lot that leads up to that wedding day, right? For me, I can think back to the months of planning, you know, you figure out a venue, you get the date, you're getting the timing set. And then there's a lot of things that I wasn't necessarily involved in or very knowledgeable about flowers, color schemes, dresses and arrangements and all the details, the invitations, the bridal shower, the get togethers, let alone the day of the week of where you're doing hair and makeup and the photo shoots. Imagine all of that buildup, all of that anticipation. And we get to the moment where Laura's walking down the aisle to me and she gets to me, we're standing there together. She looks amazing. All of our friends and our family are gathered around with us. And I look at her in the eyes and I say, oh my goodness, Laura, you look not ugly. <laughs> not ugly does not mean beautiful. Just like not sick is not similar to healthy. The sad thing is there's so many kids not sick um, that it's become the standard, right? We, we like to differentiate between common and normal at Thrive. There's a lot of stuff that's common. It's a lot of, there's a lot of kids, there's a lot of families who are used to struggling all the time. They're used to taking regular medications. Heck, ear infections alone, 91% of kids have an ear infection by age two. It's crazy. All of this is accepted as normal just because it's common, but it's not. It's not okay. It's not how we're meant to live. It's not how we're supposed to be. So that's what tonight is about. We want to look at things a little bit differently. We want to look at things through a different perspective, a different lens that might make more sense for you and for your family. I'm going to pop some slides up here on the screen to, to come along with me. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to start by talking about just that. What is the goal? What is the game plan for tonight? Well, I think of it as three things. Those three words right underneath the title, hope, answers, and help. We want to provide you with hope at the very least, right? We got to look at things a little bit differently because what we're doing isn't working, doesn't make sense. With that, we want to provide answers, right? I just don't want to give you a false hope that things can be different. I want to help, help you understand in a simple, you know, basic way, what is it that's at play here? Help you understand the nervous system more. And then we want to get to the help. We want to get to the what to do part. It doesn't do you any good if you leave this little chat with more information, but no application. So let's get to the help part too. Uh, so let's jump right into it, guys. First up, Immunology 101. What is going on here? Well, I've got another little story for you uh, because I think this illustrates this conversation really well, right? Germs and these symptoms, are they really a problem? Well, I think of it this way. Do rats cause garbage, right? What does your immune system have to do with rats in a garbage dump? Well, no, of course not. You hear that, you see maybe the first slide here, you think, no, nah, I'm a little bit confused. No, rats don't cause garbage. They, they're there when the garbage is present, right? If you got a garbage dump, you got a big landfill, whatever, it's going to have nasty rats. If you want to get rid of the rats, you can look at different poisons and baits to kill them. You can probably put out different traps. You can try to build a fence around it to keep them out and avoid it in that way. And those are probably going to help to a certain degree, right? You're probably going to kill some rats. You're probably going to take some down with you. But those are going to have consequences for one, right? Maybe poison gets into the water supply. It causes other problems. The, it's pretty labor intensive, right? It's hard to do all of that stuff. In the end of the road, it's as long as the garbage is still there. Rats are coming back, right? Rats aren't going away. So what we want to do, 
to get rid of the rats is to get rid of the garbage. The connection here to the immune system is just in the same way that rats don't cause garbage, germs aren't necessarily what's causing disease in, this, in the sense that you might think of it. Germs are showing up when that disease or that susceptib susceptibility is present. They are opportunists. They can show up and specifically set up shop, right? Wreck havoc, affect your body when there is susceptibility and when there is opportunity. So rather than focusing on the right poison to kill them off or the right fence to keep them out or the different approaches that are rat focused or germ focused, let's focus on making sure that our body is not a dump so that they can't set up shop because they're not a bad thing. Fevers, coughs, germs, different symptoms, they're not bad, right? The difference is how often they show up and how significantly those things last. So let's back up a little bit and not have the same fear, not have the same concern about germs and focus more elsewhere. It doesn't mean that there's not a role to it. It doesn't mean that there's no benefit that comes from those approaches. It just means that it's not getting to the true issue at hand, which is how well our bodies are equipped to handle whatever invader we come across, right? Because a fence keeping out a rat is a lot more likely than you not coming in contact with germs, right? It's everywhere. It's stuff we're going to bump into. So let's make sure that no matter what we come in contact with, our bodies are prepared to handle it. So what does that look like, right? If we're reframing things, how can we have a different perspective on that, right? So symptoms, not necessarily a bad thing. Say we do come across germs and that it, it's, it's set up shop to the point where our body needs to do something with it we're probably gonna express symptoms in a few different ways. One of them is a fever, right? A fever is our body's innate response to help kick out the bad guys, to help get rid of them. As body temperature goes up, it weakens the virus, weakens the bacteria, and gives your immune cells the upper hand. It gives them the advantage. It's like, you know, I explained it to kids in the office that maybe they're used to video games and there's a superpower or a cheat code or an upgrade you can buy that gives your fighter plus... 10, you know, bonus points. That's what this is. This is like plus five punching power for your immune cells. We like the fever. We want it. We want it to be there because it helps us. So when we push a fever down, when we suppress it, when we take things that limit that fever, well, all of a sudden we're giving the bad guys the upper hand and we are fighting against our body's own mechanisms that are at play. Uh, same thing. Let's think about cough. Let's think about a runny nose. If we get stuff inhaled or in those nasal passages, how do we get rid of it? The body says, oh, bad guys are here. No problem. Let me get stuff going. And we flush those symptoms out. We cough them out. We get rid of them in that way. So when we suppress those symptoms, what's going to happen there? It's just going to allow these invaders to have a more deeply entrenched um, position, right? They're going to be able to stick around more and cause more problems because your body isn't able to do what it's designed to do. So maybe you're confused, right? You're thinking, uh, so symptoms are good. Like we want to have this all the time. No, no, it's not fun, right? No one likes having that congestion or the sniffles or the fever or the aches. It doesn't feel good. But what does health look like? True, amazing, thriving health isn't someone who never has symptoms, right? Or that probably means that you're living in a vacuum a little bit too much. You need to come in contact with stuff because otherwise your immune system is going to get primed for some of the stuff we'll talk about here in a minute, more autoimmune challenges and other struggles like that. So we need to come in contact with stuff, but it's the efficiency and the frequency that matters, right? Is this something that it seems like every other week we're dealing with something and it lasts a week or two and there's never any end or once or twice a year, you have a, a little bit of symptoms, you have a little bit of something going on, your body kicks it out, you get on with it the next day, you get on with the rest of life and you keep on keeping on for it. There's a balance there, right? We need to be exposed. We need to kick into high gear sometimes. We need to keep those troops active, but constant chronic sickness, that's where it's an issue. That's where it's a problem. So what happens if we are stuck. What happens if that's you listening? Your kid is dealing with chronic ear infections. They got a respiratory infection that's two years old at this point, and they can never seem to kick it, or they're always the first one to catch whatever that's going around. What's at play when that situation is taking place? I'm willing to bet if you're tuning in with me here, it's not because your family is amazing and thriving. Hopefully that's the case. Hopefully it's because your kids are doing really well and everyone's healthy and you're not dealing with this stuff. 
but I'm guessing this jumped out to you because there's a problem and you're looking for help. So what's at play? What happens when this goes wrong? Well, we need to find the cause. We need to find the root issue. And let's understand that immune system balance a little bit differently here now. So there's two modes. We have what we call our Th1 and our Th2 cells or sort of categories of your immune system. One of those, the Th1, is really, really good for the heavy hitting, the immediate action taking. When you're exposed to something, they kick into high gear, they punch it in the face, they get out of there, and you're on to the next one. That's good. The other side, there's a benefit to that, right? I don't want to paint these as good and bad. There's just different roles. TH2, that's more of the long-term immunity. That's our antibody production. That's our, our big picture sort of balance to all of our, hey, if we come across this again, what's going to happen side of the immune system? So we need both of these present. We just don't need to get out of balance because when we get out of balance here, that's when we deal with struggles. These two sides of the nervous system, or sorry, ties these two sides of the immune system are tied to your two different modes of your nervous system, which is what you see here as parasympathetic and sympathetic. Parasympathetic matches up with that TH1, sympathetic with more of the TH2. So that is what you'll hear us talk about. That's what you'll see on your screen as the gas versus brake balance. If you've been around Thrive before, if you're one of our patients listening in, you've heard us mention that ad oh, nauseum. You've seen the scans. You've done them yourself, right? You know what that's all about, but maybe you don't. Let me explain. What is that gas versus brake balance? Well, our gas pedal mode is your survival mode. Your gas pedal is your fight or flight, go, 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 kick it into high gear. And it's great for those survival situations. Whereas the other side of things, your brake pedal, that's your wellness, that's your growth and development, that's your rest and relaxation. And that is what we need for overall longevity and wellness. That's what uh, make sure that we're developing as we're supposed to. That's what makes sure that our digestion and our immune system is as it, as it should be. That balance is going to skew our immune system balance. So if you're living in stress, if you have way too much of that gas pedal mode, your body skews towards that TH2 mode and it lowers or it sort of deactivates. It pushes onto the back burner, all of the fast acting, hard hitting immune activity. All that TH1 stuff to come in and punch the bad guys in the face, that gets put in the background if we think we're in survival, right? If we think we are just dealing with day-to-day -day stress. Our bodies are so smart, right? These mechanisms are there for a reason. The problem is the way we live now, the way we live these days, they get stuck there. They get stuck in that gas pedal mode. And when we get stuck there, we don't have the proper balance that's needed. So, that is where the immune system and the nervous system are so connected. The nervous system is the master controller of all of this. That's why we are so passionate about it at Thrive. That's why we have so many stories of kids and families who used to struggle with sickness and illness who are thriving now, not because we've got the right potion or lotion to give them, but because we know how to assess and measure their nervous system and get them back on the right track from that perspective. So how does that work? It starts up top with the vagus nerve. Your vagus nerve is the air traffic control center of the body. It's what runs the majority of that brake pedal, which means our immune system, our gut, our digestion, all of that is mediated through the vagus nerve. If we have stress up top, if we have dysfunction in this upper cervical spine, no chance that that vagus nerve is doing what it's supposed to. And now we have this out of balance, dysregulated gas pedal, TH2 shifted immune system balance. So we need to have balance here, right? It's not just a good or a bad. We don't want only that TH1 and we're susceptible to the TH2 longevity things. We need balance there. This is so, so connected to ENT issues too, right? Especially in the kiddos. This is what a lot of it comes down to. It's ear stuff. It's ear infections turning into, you know, chronic sore throats or tonsils adenoids inflamed or strep infections. And then that keep setting them shop a little bit lower into the respiratory coughs and colds and all that too. We need to get things moving and draining. Neurospinal system is everything for that too. Because when we're stuck up here, maybe because a rough fall as a kid, maybe because some of the birth trauma that that kid experienced, we can't move as well in these upper areas. And when we can't move as well, that fluid gets stuck, it breathes infection, and that downward spiral continues onward. So it's not that kids have more 
horizontal eustachian tubes that leads to them getting ear infections like you probably hear people talk about. Yes, that's true. They're more horizontal, but that's not the reason why. These aren't drain pipes that you just have to tilt them down and everything's fine. These are like a tube of toothpaste. It squeezes that fluid out and that squeezing motion called peristalsis can't happen if there's so much tension up top. That's why we see so many kiddos in these walls that are dealing with chronic ear infections, dealing with, dealing with chronic drainage issues, that once we get that cleared up, once we get them adjusted, everything releases and everything clears up. So this is everything. This is the missing link to so many immune system challenges. It's getting the nervous system on point, especially for some of our families who honestly is most people these days who they've been down Dr. Google's path. They've done a deep dive into essential oils and homeopathy and nutrition, and they're already gluten-free and casein-free and red dye 40 sugar avoid. Like they've got all those things covered. They're just missing that piece. And that's what can really set them apart to the next stage. So how do we get to this point, right? I don't want to go into too much depth here because this is a whole hour by itself, but just in brief, what leads to people being stuck in that gas pedal mode? In chiropractic, we call that the three T's, thoughts, traumas, and toxins. Another way of thinking it is, is emotional, physical, and environmental stress. The thoughts ones, that's a big deal for our kiddos these days. I wish it wasn't. I wish that there wasn't as much mental, emotional stress for kids at such young age, but the reality is that that's there and it's present and it's increasing, it seems like every day and every year. So that pushes them to that gas pedal mode, overwhelms and imbalances their nervous system. Physical stuff, we mentioned earlier, right? You could watch America's Funniest Home videos and see the kids tumbling down the slide or falling off the bed or whatever it is, right? You probably have your own video reel of your own kids doing that sort of stuff, um, let alone some of the stuff that's not talked about, birth trauma, um, the impact that either a C-section, vacuum extraction, forceps, or even the almost every single birth commonplace uh, activity of pulling, turning, guiding that baby's gentle head and neck out of the birth canal, that makes a big difference. That leads to so much of that stress and stuckness and fixation in the top of the neck, especially. So that's a big one. And environmental, not the germ stuff, but our air we breathe, the water we drink, the food we eat, the toxic load that we have, right? Products that we use in the house, cleaning products, um, the list goes on and on and on. That's the one, honestly, number three here. That's where Dr. Google has raised the bar a little bit because so many of the parents that we meet, man, they know how to search that stuff, right? They've found the clean ingredient list. They've found the different um, products to use and things to swap out and switch in their house to make good changes there. They're still missing things out, but maybe that's not you. Maybe you're early in this journey. You're learning still. What can you do to change this side of things? What does that look like? What can we do about this, right? We promise we want to get to the action steps. Well, let's talk about that. If we want to kick the sick, we got to stock up on nature's medicine cabinet. This looks like a few different things. One is let's just make sure that as a baseline, we're filling our bodies with clean fuel, with clean food. I think that uh, a lot of people get it backwards and they want to fill their cabinets with all sorts of supplements and extra products and sort of one-off things where they're missing the baseline. The baseline has got to be eating real food, eating a nutritious diet and having that as the foundation of your health and your nutrition. What, even before we get to some of the other more specialized vitamins, though, we talk about what we call the core four that thrives. So we want to have a multivitamin. We want to have an omega-3. We want to have vitamin D and a, um, and a probiotic supplement as well, because those are all things that every single human is missing, unless you're living in Florida and you're getting enough sun every day, or unless you make your own kombucha and sauerkraut and you get living food still, you're going to need to fill in the gaps with those baseline things. And then on top of that, my own family, you know, we use these extra things, some on a regular basis, some just when we're feeling a little bit off. Magnesium, zinc, colloidal silver, vitamin C, those are big immune system boosters. Essential oils, there's stuff that anything from helping with some of that respiratory, you know, congestion, like a breathe oil would be to more uh, antiseptic properties. There's herbs, there's homeopathy. Um, and then there's a lot of the I guess they have a different category. We call them, their, they kind of fit in the oils or the homeopathy or the supplement stuff. Like elderberry syrup is one we use a lot. Local honey, apple cider vinegar. There's so many good medicine cabinet natural supporters we can use as opposed to stuff that's going to suppress 
our body's immune system. And let me hit on that for a second, right? Because some people have asked me, well, what's the difference between taking a supplement and taking a medication for this? A supplement, and this is general rules of thumb, these are things that are supporting your body's own mechanisms. It's supporting your body's own physiology. Whereas a pharmaceutical, a medicine, that's coming from the outside in. It's trying to change stuff. It's trying to force something that isn't maybe what your body's trying to do. So as much as possible, option A, B, and C for us is support our own health from the inside out. Support our own homeostasis, our own pathways, our own things that are trying to take place. Make sure that that's working as it should. And then maybe as a last ditch effort, we reach to those outside in things um, when we kind of reach our breaking point. But we got to start with the inside out first. So what else, right? What about those scans? What does, how do you know the nervous system is involved? How do you know if that's what's going on? To be honest, I don't know, right? If you're listening to this, you're not a part of Thrive yet. You, you sound like, or you're here because you've got a kiddo that's struggling. You want to know, can we help? And I don't know, right? I can't promise you that we can, but that's what technology, that's what the scans are for. They let us measure and quantify how is that functioning? How is your nervous system handling life? There's a big picture scan of what we call our gas versus brake balance. It's going to let us know, are you shifted a little bit too much into that survival mode? And then there's a few other ones that are going to let us know where within this fuse box, and I think we got, oh no, I took it out, um, where within that fuse box are you going to have the primary stresses, the primary blown fuses or struggles in your life? So those scans are everything for us because it helps us make sure that we're not just guessing at your health. We're truly measuring and quantifying and tracking what is going on so that we can have the best roadmap starting out and going forward to get your kiddo or you at your best. So Here's an example, right? Here is an example of what that would look like. Uh, here's a little two-year-old that he had been dealing with round after round after round of ear infection when we met him. His parents had already scheduled the surgery for tubes and they were just reaching out as a last ditch effort. It was, I think, three months away or you know, two to three months away at that point. They're like, hey, can we do anything or is that ship sailed? So first scans, you can see on that one on the left, you're probably not a scanning expert at this point, but let me just tell you, white is normal, red is bad. Green, blue, and red would be mild, moderate, severe stress. Where's this kid got a ton of stuff going on? In that upper neck, which is our vagus nerve, that immune system regulation. It's all the ENT drainage. It's everything that we just talked about. So we get him started. We get him under care. We get to our next progress scan. You can see the skin on the right. Things are looking a million times better. That gets me excited, right? I love this stuff, the science, the details, the nerdiness behind it. You probably care more about the next thing I'm about to say, which is what changed for the kiddo. Never had another ear infection again, right? This little dude, we still get to see in the office every single week, still thriving, still crushing life years later. And he got to cancel the tube surgery because his, uh, his ENT said, you know what? Things look great. I don't see any reason why we would still make this happen, why we would still do it. And it was a while. It was months. It was that sick, that first six month and 12 month checkup. Mom thought for sure, okay, it's going to be back. You know, the next winter that we went through, it's going to come back again, but the body's smart. The body heals and he is doing awesome. He is thriving. So what are those action steps, right? We promised help. What do we need to do? One, the fact that you're here tells me that you trust your gut. You trust your instincts. You're not satisfied with where your kids or your families are at right now. And that's amazing. Keep it up. Don't accept what has become common for most of the world as okay for your family. It's not normal just because it's so, so common. So keep trusting your gut and find your tribe, find your people that believe and want that too. For us, we're full of that here at Thrive, right? That is a bunch of families that care about what we care about and they're on the same missions as we are. You'll probably find that here. Hopefully you can find that in your own community, your own neighborhood, your own wherever circles are as well to make sure that you're surrounded by like-minded people so that you can support each other so that you can share resources, share ideas, and be on that mission together. And then finally, another question you want to know is, okay, does that, does that scan thing, is that what's going on in my kid? And like I said, I don't know. I don't know if that's what's at play. I don't know if that's why your kid is struggling, but let's at least find out. Let's at least get checked and see, 
if we can make a difference, right? I can't promise that we can until we see, until we measure it, until we find it out. The way that works at Thrive, we always start off with a complimentary consultation just to see where you're at, see how things are looking. And if we can get that, um, or sorry, and, and if we decide at that point that Thrive is what you're looking for, if this makes sense, we'd go straight to those exams and those scans. And we get to track and measure everything that's going on, dig into their case history, figure out how do we get to this point. And then there's a roadmap. There's a game plan where we get to see, all right, how long is it going to take? What's it going to cost? And all that stuff. And we'll go through that together with you and make sure that we've got the best plan possible for your kiddo. Typically, that whole scan process is $150 for the first visit and the second one to go over all those findings. Please, if, if you're reaching out and you're tuning in with me here, mention that you were on the webinar. We'd be happy to give you a gift certificate that takes $50 off of that. So it would be 100 instead of 150. And we'll do whatever we need to to make sure that your kiddo, your family is at the best place and that we can do whatever we need to to make sure that they're thriving. So I'm glad that you were able to join me. Thank you again. The fact that you're here, the fact that you're listening tells me that you care about what we care about. And that means that you're already at the right place. You've already found your tribe with that. Looking forward to meeting you soon. Have a great rest of your day.